Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to our Bible study lessons. Um, we are on chapter seven. This is called Pacers. If you're following us uh, with us in the Bible study book, uh, remember you can get the ebook or the print book if you want to follow along. Um, you can also find those links on the Facebook page. Uh, so uh, this is another quick example is you can watch this back um, or you can pause it. You are leading your own Bible study group. You can pause it as you ask the questions and go around the room. Um, or if you're doing this online <coughs> with people, then you can also follow along. <coughs> books. So without further ado, I want to introduce a best-selling author, John Warner. So take it away. Um, have you ever heard of Chris Chataway? No. Nope. Chris Chataway, ring any bells for anybody? Well, if I were to say, have you ever heard of Roger Bannister? Uh, if you were a track buff, you would probably say yes. Um, he was an English medical student and was the first man to break the four minute mile. Um, he did it on May 6th, 1954 with a time of three minutes 59 and 4 tenths seconds. Or if I were to say John Landy, you might say, oh yes, he was a butterfly chaser from Australia and was the second man uh, to break the four minute mile. Uh, his time was three minutes and 58 seconds flat. And he did it on June 21st, uh, 1954. Uh, then the two ran against each other in what was billed as the mile of the century when both men broke the four minute mile and Landy uh, lost and, uh, and, and Bannister won with a time of three minutes, uh, uh, 58 and, and uh, 8 tenths seconds. Uh, but Chris Chataway, uh, Chris Chataway was a pacer. Now, the pacer runs on the outside of the star, and the star runs on the inside of the track so that he will run exactly a mile, but the pacer run, winds up running more than a mile. Uh, and Chris Chataway trained for three years at the site of, of Roger Bannister, learning how to run three quarters of a mile in three minutes, because uh, Bannister had the, his, his, a famous kick at the end of the race, and he felt like if he could run three quarters of a mile in three minutes, he could use that kick in, in order to, to get his time under four minutes. And on May 6th, 1954, his time at the three quarter mark was exactly three minutes. Uh, and then six weeks later, Chris Chataway was flown to the side of John Landy where he paced him to uh, the new world record of three minutes and 58 seconds flat. Uh, and uh, then a short time later, he paced another man to a, a world record in the two mile run. And he finished so closely behind him, he was given the same time. So Chris Chataway was a person who had the ability to run a four minute mile, but yet was able to, to bring out the best in other people. Uh, and I would say that at least in our church, uh, we need more pacers, people who are willing uh, to give other people the glory, other people the credit, uh, but yet run their own race. Now, when Jesus' disciples are mentioned, most people will think of Peter first. But yet, if it were not for his brother, Andrew, the world may have never heard of Peter. Uh, 
what did Peter do? Uh, Melanie, on the bottom of page 69, John 1, 40 and to, to 42, would you read that for us, please? I can't hear you. Uh, can you do something to, 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 oh, to do? Oh, sorry, I had muted. There we go. Uh, one of the two. Now I can hear you. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother, Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. All right. Um, now, Thomas was another disciple. Uh, his name was Didymus, which is Greek for the twin. Uh, he apparently was not able to win his brother, or it could have been sister, uh, to follow Christ. Uh, but remember that Andrew was the first disciple to realize that Jesus was the Messiah. Uh, now there's 12 references to Andrew in the New Testament. And a third of them are simply a list of who the disciples were. And everywhere Andrew is mentioned, Peter is mentioned first. Uh, and, and they don't ever say, uh, Peter, the brother of Andrew, when they say Andrew, they say the brother of Peter, but invariably they will mention Peter first. Uh, Andrew was a fisherman. Uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew 4, 18, please, Melanie, on uh, the middle of page 70. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Uh, now, Andrew was from uh, Bethsaida, uh, and he and Andrew uh, and Philip uh, shared a hometown together. Uh, they were all three from Bethsaida. Uh, Andrew was first a disciple of John the Baptist, and he was the first disciple of Jesus. Uh, now, if you would read for us, please, John 1, 35 to 40, on the bottom of page 70. The following day, as John was standing with two of his disciples, Jesus walked by. John looked at him intently and then declared, see, there is a lamb of God. Then John's two disciples turned and followed Jesus. Jesus looked around and saw them following. What do you want? He asked them. Sir, they replied, where do you live? Come and see, he said. So they went with him by the place where he was staying and were with him from about four o'clock that afternoon in the evening. One of these men was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. So Andrew was one of the first disciples or the first disciple of Christ. Now, sometimes Andrew would have questions. Uh, at the bottom of page 70, please, Mark 13, 1 through 4. As he was leaving the temple that day, one of his disciples said, Teacher, what beautiful buildings these are. Look at the decorated stonework on the walls. Jesus replied, Yes, look, for not only not one stone will be left upon another except as ruins. And as he sat on the slopes of the Mount of Olives across the valley from Jerusalem, Peter, James, John, and Andrew got alone with him and asked him, just when is all this going to happen to the temple? Will there be some warning ahead of time? So Andrew was a pacer, a facilitator. Um, and in addition to his brother, Simon Peter, he also brought other people. Uh, John 12, 20 to 22, please, Melanie. Some Greeks who had come to Jerusalem to attend the Passover 21, oh, paid a visit to Philip, who was from Bethsaida, and said, sir, we want to meet Jesus. Philip told Andrew about it, and they went together to ask Jesus. So Andrew doesn't do great things uh, himself. 
but he sets them in motion like a pacer. Uh, remember when Jesus fed 5,000 men, not including the women and children? Uh, let's hear about that in, from John 6, 5 through 9. Melanie, please. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing that a multitude was coming to him, Jesus said to Philip, how are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? This he said to test him for he himself knew that he would do that he would do what Philip answered him 200 denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little one of his disciples Andrew Simon Peter's brother said to him there is a lad who has five barley loaves and two fish but what are they among so many uh, a denarii was uh a working man's wage, it would be worth maybe a hundred dollars in today's money. Uh, so two hundred denarii uh, would would be what uh, 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 they were talking about here. Uh, now the last reference to Andrew comes from Acts one. Uh, in the Bible where he's present and voting on Matthias to replace Judas as one of his disciples. Uh, and then after, J but after Jesus' resurrection, Simon Peter and six other disciples went fishing and Jesus appeared to them. Uh, John 21, two and three, please. A group of us were there, Simon Peter, Thomas the twin, Nathaniel, from Cana in Galilee, from Cana in Galilee, my brother James and I, two other disciples, Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, we all said. We did but caught nothing all night. Well, Jesus had them throw their nets in, you'll remember, and they caught so many fish they couldn't even bring them all in. Uh, they, cost a hundred, they, they caught 153 large fish without tearing the net. But did you notice something? Now, Andrew was one of those seven, but he was so unimportant that John didn't even mention his name when he was listing the disciples. Uh, so uh, Andrew stayed in the background as a pacer uh, and didn't seek the limelight. Uh, Tradition says that Andrew was crucified in about 60 AD on an X-shaped cross and was bound but not nailed to it. Uh, and according to the Acts of Andrew, uh, he preached from the cross for three days before he died. Uh, but Andrew's death of uh, inspired what is known as the St. Andrew's Cross, uh, an x shaped cross. Uh, now, uh, a few days ago, uh, before I wrote this, my daughter, Sandy, was in a grocery store and a lady had a toddler in her basket. And as they would pass things in the store, she would put them in the basket. The lady would say, apple, and have her daughter repeat it. Banana, lettuce, tomato. But she was having her daughter repeat each time the things that she pointed out. So the mother was pacing her daughter's learning. And Andrew was a pacer, Jesus' first disciple. Uh, now, his life brings up the question, when is the time to serve? And let's think about that for a minute. Mary gave birth to Jesus when she was 14. George Washington invented, uh, or George Westinghouse invented the rotary engine when he was 15. John C. Hall and his brother created Hallmark cards uh, when they were teenagers. Uh, Johnny Campbell 
when he was a senior at Pampa High School, managed the campaign for re-election of a United States congressman. George Washington fought his first battle as a Lieutenant Colonel at the age of 22. Uh, William Pitt the Younger was Prime Minister of England at the age of 24. Uh, Charles Lindbergh uh, flew the spirit of St. Louis and became a national hero when he was the first man to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. He was 25 at the time. Jesus Christ began his three-year ministry at the age of 30. Martin Luther nailed his famous thesis to the door when he was 34. By the time Julius Caesar, Julius Caesar was 35, he had conquered 800 cities, 300 nations, and 3 million men. Uh, John Glenn was 40 when he became the first American to circle the earth in space. John F. Kennedy became president of the United States when he was 43. Abraham Lincoln had a history of failures until he won the presidency when he was 51. Uh, Jay Morgan made his first million at the age of 60. Uh, if Winston Churchill had died when he was 64, nobody would have ever remembered him. But he became prime minister of England at the age of 65. Bob Dole sought the presidency in his 70s. Ronald Reagan was past 80 when he completed his second term. I read about a woman who wrote a bestseller when she was 88 years old. It was the first book she'd ever written. I saw Bob Hope give national television specials when he was in his 90s. And George Burns had a contract to play Las Vegas on his 100th birthday. Uh, so the New English version of the Bible, Psalms 9414. Melly, if you'd read that for us, please, on page 73. The righteous will still bear fruit in old age. So the time to serve the Lord is now. Uh, Tom Brady was famous for fourth quarter comebacks. Uh, many of us are in the fourth quarter of life. And last week we asked the question, where were you when God needed you? And now is to compose that answer. Uh, now is the time to resolve things, to make your fourth quarter comeback, uh, to make the kick in the last quarter of your four minute mile. Uh, now, James 2, 17, Melanie, please. Middle of 73. So you see, it isn't enough just to have faith. You must also do good to prove that you have it. Faith doesn't just show itself by good works, is no faith at all. It is dead and useless. So James said in the King James Version, even so faith, if it not hath works, is dead, being alone. And in Philippians, it says, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interest but each of you to the interest of others. Now, if you were going to New York City, there's a corporation called Abilities Incorporated, and it only hires people who are disabled. And if you were to visit the CEO, he would come out behind, from behind his desk in a wheelchair to greet you and shake your hand. But if you made the mistake of calling this company Disabilities Inc. instead of Abilities Inc., uh, he would correct you in a hurry. Uh, for example, he would say, can you take a car, disassemble it, and put it back together blindfolded? And if you say no, he would respond, well, you're kind of handicapped, aren't you? And then he would say, we have people who work here who do that kind of work every day. We concentrate on our abilities and not our disabilities. So all of us need to do that. 
We need to look at our abilities instead of our disabilities. Uh, my friend Ramona Height uh, has multiple sclerosis. And when she lived in Pampa, I remember a time on my birthday when I got a call from her. And she said, John, on behalf of the First United Methodist Church in Pampa, I'm just calling to wish you a happy birthday. And she did that for every member of our church. And at that time, we had a membership probably uh, in excess of 400. So that meant that virtually every day, she was calling somebody on behalf of the church to wish him a happy birthday. But she didn't concentrate on her disability, her multiple sclerosis. She concentrated on her ability to use a telephone to remind people that their church was aware that they had achieved another milestone. Uh, a member of our Sunday school class, Melba, uh, is almost totally blind, uh, but she is a member of the choir of our church. And because she's almost blind, she, she has a great deal of trouble reading the music. So she memorizes every single piece of music that we sing every Sunday, every special during Easter and Christmas that consists of between 80 and 120 pages. Uh, but Melba is a can-do person. That is, she concentrates on her ability and not her disability. Uh, so if you'd bow your heads, please. Lord, help us to be inspired by the example of Andrew. Let us be the pacers who lead others to you and to your son. We pray in his name. Amen. 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 All right. Join us next week for chapter eight. Was Jesus serious? So that'll be a good one as well. Thank you all for being here this week. And we'll see you all next week. Don't forget the Facebook page. You can join as well if you want to comment or have questions. So otherwise, have a great week, you all, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone.